right now, right? So she's probably calling, trying to find out how to get on. My mom's 90, by the way. She's doing good. So hopefully mom will find a way to get on. Um, I don't know what I was saying. I was saying that, uh, oh, I don't want to be in a box. So with me, I like to do a lot of things. I like precision patchwork. I like to do things that are somewhat traditional, but I like to do things that are very contemporary and also precise. And I got known many, many years ago as being the caveman quilter because... Um, there's no rules, there's no measuring, there's no science behind it. It's just like anything goes. And so I became the caveman quilter for certain techniques and I've had fun doing that. Over the years, I ended up creating some small improvisational quilts and I would teach these and I ended up creating a border that, uh, love this Pueblo is home for you. Hey, Melanie. Uh, creating a border on some of my quilts. And I'm going to show you the show and tell part after I go through the demo part. So I'm going to show you what the dancing squares uh, look like, and then I'm going to show you some images uh, that you'll be able to use. So let me just get started. First of all, um, we're going to end up making strips. We're going to make two, uh, two strip sets, but it's really easy. Now, I've got a piece of orange fabric here. And I'm just going to simply take this fabric and tear it. Yes, I could cut it, but I'm just a lot quicker. So I'm going to give you all the lesson on tearing, okay? This is the, by the way, it doesn't hurt the fabric. The fabric doesn't care. It's happy. And if you've got a youngster in your life, and I am really promoting sewing for youngsters, which is part of what Lizzie Albright is about, you need to get kids sewing. They do not need to worry about a perfect quarter inch seam. That stresses them out. You can encourage them to try, but on a project like this, if they don't get it right, as long as it's sewn together, that's all we care about. So get them in front of a sewing machine and don't fret them over stuff like precise, precision, accurate, perfect quarter inch seams. So I'm going to take this fabric. I'm going to let me, I'm going to actually come down here for a second and I'm going to just snip. And by the way, this is caveman measuring. I don't know what that is. That's that big. All right. So hold your fingers, everybody that big. It's not that big. It's not this big. It's that big. That's all I need is a strip about that big. Now I've got it snipped. All right. Now that's just to make it easier, especially if it's on a salvage, but this is how you do it. You go rip and you drop it and you finish it with your knee okay that's how you tear fabric now you have been given the instruction i give all of you a diploma so if anybody ever asks oh i can't believe you tear fabric yes you can because you got a certificate from me just now so i'm going to do that again for you i'm going to make this snip snip rip drop knee and you're done okay that's how you make your strips. Now, on your strip sets, and these are actually longer than I need them to be, but you could make them that long. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to cut it in half. So I end up with two from the same fabric. Two of these, all right? Now, the next fabric that I want is about the same width, all right? And I'm going to use da, 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 a multicolored fabric. Now, since this is orange, I'm going to try to stay away from orange on this one. But let's go here. If you need to snip, but snip, rip, knee. All right. And this one, I can use anywhere along here because it's none of it's orange. So I'm going to do this one in half as well. I know you can't see me cutting, but I'll get you down there in a second because I just want to hold these up for now. All right, so I'm going to put this on the table, show you what I've got. I have an orange strip, I have my middle strip, and I have this strip. All right, so far you're with me, right? We don't know what this is. We don't have a measurement. We don't really care, okay? Kind of important. You just, just make it about that wide. Now, sew your two seams together. All right. I'm going to put that away because 
I've already done that. I've already sewn those together. Now, on the pressing, I press to the inside. So they're both pressed this way. It's not critical if you do it another way. But if I do it this way, when I end up, because I'm going to end up with these bits being squares, it just means my square is on top of the background fabric. So I've pressed to the center. All right? Now, I'm going to now make... All right, let's talk about the fabrics for a second. I used orange. I could have used yellow, all right? I could have gone yellow, center fabric, yellow. And the reason for me, this is not important either, it's just me and my love for hand-dyed fabric. The reason I use the multicolor here is because I'm going to cut this into strips and I'm going to keep this in order so my squares that are going to dance slowly change color rather than me having to get a bunch of other colors. If my outside fabric, the outside two strips are the same color, the inside can change. I could have used yellow, but I put the same on each side. All right, because I've got orange out here, I want another strip of fabric that is also orange. So the only different fabric that you're seeing is what's in the middle strip, all right? Now, this one ends up being whatever width it is after it's sewn together. This next strip that I'm going to cut needs to be, let me lay this down. I like it. Let me go to the other side, sorry. I'd rather just prefer to get to this other side. This one, I would prefer to be slightly less than the total of the pieced one. So here's, let's say this is a third, this is a third, and this is a third. I'm going to use both of those thirds, but I'm only going to use maybe two thirds of this last one. So the width of this next strip that I tear is based on the sewn measurement of this one. I just don't want it to be as tall, and that'll make sense in a minute. If you have a, I'll tell you, it's probably even easier if you go a third, a third, and then half the distance of this next one. Let's just do that. Let's make that a kind of a general rule. So this is where I'm going to tear this strip. So I'm going to take it there. I know you like watching me strip, so I'm going to do that again. Ha, ha, ha! There come the comments. You guys are so funny. i got to watch and see what you just said. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, from L Lenoir, North Carolina. That is so funny. Thank you so much. All right, well, I'll get back to you in a second. So this one, now you see, we've got two. Now, I don't need this one to be this long, so I'm going to make it the same basic, same, it doesn't matter, but I'm just, for the sake of my demo, and for the sake I need room on my table, I'm going to do that and just make it that long. So here we go. Here's what I got. All right, now I'm gonna go press this one because I don't like these. So you guys entertain yourself for 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That wasn't 30 seconds at all. That ripping gave me the jeebies. Oh. That is crazy, Marcy. Crazy. <laughs> Blanche Young made you a stripper. God bless Blanche Young. Yes, she did. I love that. I ripped my fabric when my daughter cringes. Oh, you guys are making me so happy right now. It's so great. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go back to this. All right. Now, 
You don't need your rotary cutter. I mean, you don't need your ruler. This guy, no, 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 okay? You don't need it. Put it away. This is what I'm gonna do, and I need to keep these in order. I'm gonna start down here and just trim off that little bit, just to kind of get it going. Don't need that anymore. I wanna cut these so they look like squares. But you and I both know we have to make a seam allowance, so I need it to be a tad bit more rectangular so it turns into a square. Now, I'm not trying to make it a perfect square either. I'm just saying visually, if I go like this, and they're a little bit more rectangular, you see what I'm doing? I'm just cutting these with no ruler. They're not the same size, and I'll even get rid of that little bit right there on the end. All right, now, I do not want to get these out of order because, in this case, I want to see the color shifting as I come down, all right? So, I'm going to pick these up in order. Here's one. Now, I know this is from my side, so please understand. I know from yours it's the opposite way. One, two, three. Oh, my gosh, i got to cut them all the way. Make sure I get that. Four. Doesn't matter how many. Just make as many as you want. Just enjoy the process, you people. Okay? There's my stack of these. Now, I'm going to set those aside for a second. Just going to set them out of the way. And I'm going to come back to this piece. Let me see what you guys are saying to me. 50 years ago, Newbury sold fabric alone machine that measured yardage notch. Oh, and rip. So liber it is liberating to rip, Cindy. You were right about that. If you're ever in my workshop here in La Vida, if you come to one of my retreats, you're going to be ripping fabric, and you're going to love it. It's like, okay, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to stop in the middle of this tell you. So I was in England. I was in Bath, England, and I believe her name was Helen, and she was in my class, and she says, I just can't tear the fabric. I just can't tear the fabric. And then she made it through the morning cutting her fabric and she was behind the rest of the class because tearing was so much faster. Somehow or another, after lunch, she realized that she was behind and she started tearing her fabric and it was like letting loose a monster. She was free, some sort of crazy inside pent up whatever. I could not stop her from tearing fabric. That's the true story. It was great. All right, now we're down to this piece right here. I want to cut these not straight, okay? I want to cut them so they're a little bit ziggy zaggy. And I call it a tumbler, like a tumbler drinking glass. So let me start with this end piece and I'm just going to cut a gentle angle. I'll pull it apart so you can see what I've done there. All right? The next one is going to zigzag just the opposite, only a little bit. But because I don't know these angles as I do them, this is another time where I want to make sure they stay in order because they fit together in this manner. All right? Now... Remember, this is a bit shorter than these. So, I'm going to use the line that's on my mat. I'm going to put these in order. See how I'm picking them up very carefully in order so I can put them back together in order? I'm going to put this one right here so that the top of it goes above the line. I'm going to put this top back on the line. Then I'm going to make sure this top, even if it's just a tad above, so just a little bit above the line is okay for me. All right, so I'll do that. And then we alternate going from one of these to the other, just making sure this is a little higher than the line. Now, it's going to get double long because this is a situation where you understand that. All right, so I would keep going down the way. And if you run out of space, just sew this together and then do the next set and then join them. 
okay? Then you can just join them. But here's the thing. If I was to take these two now, because I would start here as I work my way across at the sewing machine, if I was to put these right sides together, there's a tendency to want to line up this edge, and I know that's way over there on the edge, right there. But here's the thing. That's not how we laid them out. This is the edge that I'm going to sew from, this top working down this way. So before you sew these, get your rotary cutter and cut off those bits there so that you now know where to start sewing all of these together. You don't care right now that the bottom edge is jiggy jog. You want this to be somewhat straight. I don't even want it to be straight straight. I'm just saying that so that it doesn't turn into a snake, this is going to help me get this sewn together straight. And I'm now going to be able to sew all of these together to create my dancing square. It can be a border, it can be a panel, it can be an insert, whatever you want to do, it can be fun like that. Before I take this away, I want to tell you, because I'm not going to take time to sew these, but there are times after I've sewn this together, all right, I've sewn it together, I'm happy with it, there are times that I then want to, and it might be, it might, let me see if I can find a piece, hang on a second. It might be that I want to insert a strip like this in there. Well, if I want to put in a strip, I need to cut, right? So imagine this is sewn together. I'm going to say that twice. This is sewn together because I would not do what I'm about to do until this is sewn together. But once it is sewn together, I can then come in and make a little snaky line and I would be able to then insert, because this would all be sewn together, right? I would then be able to insert my piece. All right? Yay. Now I gotta see what you're saying. Interesting. I love it when somebody says interesting, because it doesn't mean they like it and doesn't mean they don't like it. No, I'm, I'm joking with you there, Miss Candy. All right, so that is dancing squares. That's the way I go about making them. And you can make them as, as this size strips. You can make them that size strips. You can, whatever you want to do, that's your choice. You can make them. Now, I'm going to pull this up a little bit closer to me. And I'm going to actually try to sit down in a chair. Because I have some things to show you while you're here before I forget. The quilt show is doing the stay in place. If you're not on the quilt show and you want to have something really great to do for under 20 bucks, this is our best special for six months and you've got access to hundreds of shows that you can watch. And Violet Craft, who some of you know her fabulous English paper piecing, and she does very unique, innovative paper piecing. That is the current show that's happening right now. So now let me show you some pictures here, okay? <laughs> this is my Chantel, and I know I'm sitting back here. Whoa! Um, but there's one of my little Chantel tulips with a little wonky border. But on the left side, you see where I did dancing squares as a border. On the right set side, you also see where I may, and you guys, you understand you can do this with kids, with your kids, all right? And then I sliced through the middle of the squares. Now, when I sewed the two sides back together, do you see how that the squares jiggy jogged? They don't line up. Do you think I cared? I hope you can tell. I'm more about having fun and creating a visual fun impact than try, this is not about precision piecing. If I was going to do that, I would, yes. Improvisation makes no stress quilting. Mary Beth, I am with you 100% on that. So that is the dancing squares that I've taught for years. And even on the bottom of this, you can see where I found some dancing squares leftovers and just took some scraps and sewed them together to make the bottom of this border. 
So it's fun, it's whimsical, and I'm going to keep going. Now you stay with me because this is where it gets exciting, okay, you guys? This quilt, I'm going to say right here, this is a quilt that I made for my nephew and his wife many years ago for a wedding uh, present. Now these dancing squares are different than what I showed you. They're a little more complex in how I did it, but the basic principle is the same. And you can see how they just happily dance around this whole thing. It's the, the next, it's the next to the inside border or the next to the outside border is the one I'm trying to draw your attention to. Okay. And you know what? You guys can do it so quickly. It, it doesn't take long to do this. So that's a great thing. Here's my pink flower prelude quilt. This is probably 60 inches tall and that inner border, they're kind of dancing squares. They've got some little rectangles attached to them, but you can see how they're just floating there on that background because of the way I used my background fabric. All right, so now there's more. I want to show you this next one. This next one makes me so happy because my whole goal as a teacher is to get you excited about what I'm teaching and make it your own, all right? Yes, you're going to probably experiment with what I just showed you, but then you go, well, what would happen if I used four fabrics, or what if I did five fabrics, and what if I cut them this way, and what if I did this, and instead of using the same fabric, what if I used a different fabric? You get to do it yourself. The next quilt I'm going to share with you is a quilt that was kind of um, done, well, I, it came to me from a gal named Kat, Kate Kramer, She's in La Vida. She's a, a great, wonderful quilter in this area. And she is on an online little modern quilt group, okay? This online group of modern quilters. And they ended up taking my dancing square method and they passed out some purple fabric and a whole group of them made a column, all right? Because you just saw me make a column. And then they sent them together to be finished up. Get ready for this. This is this makes me happier than I can tell you. Oh my gosh. And these squares are maybe an inch to an inch and a quarter. This quilt is a full-size bed quilt. And I absolutely adore it. All right? I absolutely look at the happiness in this quilt. It's just wonderful, wonderful squares. And then, I don't know, I don't know. I just like happiness abounds just by using the dancing square technique, all right? So I also want to tell you about this quilt that's called Happy Dance. It is kind of dancing squares, but even I like to continue exploring. So in this case, it's kind of dancing squares. Let me show you what I did. I made this column. And if you look at that column, you're going to see the same thing, except if you look at the tumbler, the tumbler is the fabric that's between the squares. I made it in three pieces, a blue and a strip of dark that was skinny and a pink. So when I cut my tumblers, and join this together, like I just showed you, I now have this sort of strip running down in between the squares. And I am not trying to line it up. It jiggy jogs a little bit, but your eye... I'm back. Kathleen, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Thank you for coming back. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. 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 And my apologies for the delay. So I was mostly just telling you guys that the happy dance pattern is available along with the kit at rickytims.com. 
but um, we we are not shipping right now until we get the uh, COVID done and over with and bring. I only have one person that does shipping uh, here anyway, so I'm I'm having her stay at home during this time. So that's happy dance. Yay, that's fun. Um, let me show you these other pictures while you're coming back. Thank you guys for coming back. I'm sorry that I had to, uh, everything kind of shut down for a second. Um, this, look at this. Me back in the day with uh, Sange d'Auton, which is uh, my quilt that won a big prize at Houston. It was one of the Master Machine Awards. It was the big $5,000 award. Um, boy, did I look young then. That was probably the year 2000 maybe 2001, but I think 2000 was the year that was. So that's me back in the day. I found these pictures, so I just scanned them for you. Um, <laughs> there's the pink flower prelude quilt that I showed you just a second. Hey, Margo, it's good to see you. Thank you for popping back in. I'm almost done here, but I wanted you guys to see these pictures that I'm sharing. So the good news is, is the meat and potatoes of everything is done. So there's Ricky being goofy and goober and all that kind of stuff back in the day. And then this is when I won uh, back in uh, 1998 with uh, with Simple Gifts, uh, one of my quilts that was iconic. It was, uh, for me, the kind of the quilt that put me on the quilting arena and map. So um, I used to stand by my quilts with my business cards just so that I could try to get work. And uh, you guys, <laughs> Margo's calling me a cutie. Oh my God, look at me. I'm standing behind, I'm staying behind the quilt right now because... That's how that should be, but you guys, for, seriously, um, you guys mean so much to me and, and the quilt show and the quilters, and you've been so encouraging and, and supportive over all these years, and I look at those pictures back when I was, I guess I would call myself a young whippersnapper compared to what it is now. Um, here's another little piece of information for everybody. It's April. On April the 24th, of this year, just in a couple weeks, I will be 20 years old because it was on April the 24th of the year 2000 that I had quadruple heart bypass surgery. So I've been blessed with an extra 20 years and I don't take any of those days for granted. Um, my career has been the best of my life during those 20 years. Um, and I don't know how many more I have to go, but I'll take these 20 and be very grateful for them. Um, and especially grateful for you guys for being so supportive. This Saturday, uh, don't want you to forget, Lizzie Albright is going to be, Kat and Bowser and I are going to reveal Lizzie Albright. And I've got that up in the top there. You can listen to Lizzie Albright on YouTube. It's, I call them a vid pod. It's kind of like a podcast. You don't need to watch. Although you can watch the front and the end where Kat and I are talking, it is really meant to be something to listen to. And if you go to the podcast area, then you're going to be able to hit the first chapter if you've not listened. And it just auto plays like just listening to an audio book. On Saturday, April the 11th, this coming Saturday, at this same time, we are, Kat Bowser and I, are revealing the Lizzie Albright uh, quilt because the quilt is important in the story in the same way the tornado in The Wizard of Oz is important to The Wizard of Oz. The book Lizzie Albright is not about a quilt. It's about a young girl. It's about promises. It's about broken promises. It's about deception. It's about courage. It's about overcoming obstacles. It's a very powerful story with a lot of things, but it's not about a quilt. But Lizzie's journey is inspired by a quilt, and that quilt happens in chapter 7. So if you haven't listened at least up through chapter 8, I would strongly encourage you to do that before Saturday so that the whole reveal will make sense to you. So you can go to YouTube, put in Lizzie Albright, find the VidPod page, and just listen. You've got plenty of time to listen to those eight chapters between now and Saturday. But then Kat Bowser and I will join you on a split screen, and we will reveal the Lizzie Albright quilt, 
and we will reveal the fabrics that I've designed for Ben Artex that are very kind of vintage uh, depression era style fabrics that will happen at this time coming up on Saturday. Yay, I got Wilma from Deutschland. Wilma, Wilma Ars, wie geht's? Du bist, I mean, du bist freulich. Bist du freulich? Du bist, du bist. Ich bin, ich bin, there we go, ich bin freulich. Yes, I am, very happy. So, you guys, thank you for spending time with me today. There's no measurements on the project I taught you today. You are willing to, you can go back and look at this on YouTube. This video sticks on YouTube. Um, and it actually on YouTube, I think it sticks those two sections together that got split up. So, if, but you can go back. I want you to do this. And actually, if you've got a youngster in your life, do it with them. They will love tearing fabric with you. They will love trying to sew seams that don't have to be perfect quarter inches. If they're too young to use a rotary cutter, you can do that part with them. And if you do anything with what I've taught you today, please send it to me. You can find ways to contact us through the quilt show or through my personal website, rickytims.com. You can send those to us. We love seeing what you do. So don't do it and hide it, you know, celebrate it, celebrate it with us. So I'm wishing you all the best. I hope that you are social distancing. I hope you're staying at home, staying away from, you know, the harms, harm that's out there. Um, this is a, a rough time for all of us. We've, none of us have ever experienced this. And uh, God bless all of you. Stay safe, stay healthy, be creative, love each other, love your families, love your friends, and wishing you all the very best. God bless you all, and, and uh, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back Saturday and show you some more love. See you, everybody. Thank you for being here. It means a lot.